good morning to all of you. Thank you for uh, joining this Sangam 2020 uh, fireside conversation with eminent people. It's my absolute pleasure and honor to have a conversation with uh, a very well-known professor and scientist, Suresh Bhagava from Australia. Allow me to introduce him briefly. He is an Indian-born Australian scientist. He is a distinguished professor of RMIT, Australia. He is very passionate about mentoring young minds of India, and he has a many closely working relations with Indian scientists as well as Indian universities and organizations. Without further ado, I like to start the conversation uh, with my good friend, well known, and I look up to him. Uh, is a very good scientist and a passionate individual. Sure. Professor Bangava, welcome to Sangam 2020. Thank you. It is a pleasure that uh, you could take some time to engage our audience on an interesting questions. The center is the part of my passion towards research. Okay. I usually, I mean, I call sometimes a little bit stupid because I do not want to reach the excellence in one single discipline. I, I, I feel that there is no discipline of science. Science is a science. Sometimes chemistry is joined with chemical engineering. Like the science in, introduce the ideas, hypothesis, generate the knowledge and translation of the knowledge into the real product is done by the engineers. How you can separate them? If you if you if you can if you want to pass on your ideas, your knowledge, your paper, your thoughts into the real product, you need engineers. Without engineers, you can't do that, right? So the center of center of the advanced materials and industrial chemistry, I introduce there. Then I introduce them. I bring the chemical engineers, electronic engineers. I bring the, uh, the electrochemist. I bring the organic chemist. I brought the all the you know the pharmacologist in there too. And the difference was there in my center. All these scientists were in a one hall, one room. They meet four times a day. They are not sitting in different offices. In most of the collaborative research, people do the collaborative research around the globe. If they need a modeler, they send the samples to the modeler. They, they, they talk to the Cambridge, they talk to somewhere, they talk to somewhere physicists, they talk to engineers, they do the collaborative research. The difference, what I make it there, all these parts, all these pupils are the part of my team. They talk to each other four times a day. They keep an eye, they share their knowledge all the times throughout the day. So the innovation comes through. I give you one example. Like, like many peoples in South India, I'm also passionate towards gold. I love gold. And tell me who doesn't like gold? Everybody loves gold, right? Is in there too. So the gold was, first, first, first impression was there. Then when I love the gold, then the gold research I used to do at the atomic levels, they take the molecules, making the gold molecules. Well, then one of the ACR methi, which produced largest amount of gold, gold refineries and everything, they contacted me. They usually prepare the nine carat gold alloys. Billions of dollars worth of nine carat gold alloys, the business in the Western world, because all the frames, all the watch, all the jewelries in Western world is nine carat gold alloy, not like South India, not 100% pure, not, not 99.95, okay, or 22 carats. There is nine carat, right? And they came to me, uh, Suresh, we sometimes have a stress corrosion cracking in there. The gold alloy cracks small, and the product comes back to the market, and we lose the millions. Can you find out why it is happening? And we don't know why it happens. So I took a German girl. She was working as an undergraduate. I talked to my one of the metallurgists that we want to do this research. And we invented, is in there, in 50 cents, in five minutes, which of their alloys is going to survive in the market? Which of their alloys is going to crack? We tested their hundreds of alloys, failed, failed alloys. It passed through every test. So all of a sudden, no cost to them. We develop a quality control methods. Which of your alloys is going to survive in the market? Which of the alloys is not going to survive the market? Here we go. 
So the MD was very, very happy. And he came to my office. He said, Suresh, you solved the problems. We have tested now more than 100 alloys. It is working, it's working. And it cost only 50 cents. It cost only five minutes. It's perfect. Then we published this paper in the gold bulletin journals, which is Q1. And this paper come out as a hot paper of the year, straight away. So I got an 80 pounds reward from the Britain as well. That's the hot paper from publisher. Here you got Suresh. And we published this paper after about six, seven, eight, ten 10 years because we thought, okay, we pass on. The MD of the company was very, very happy. This is a big company of the gold. So they came my vice chancellor and they gave me half a kilogram gold bar award. Your gold this time for my research, right? So all my gold got gold. The gold passion continues. Then I followed there too. The gold has a special affinity towards mercury. And then I realized that mercury is becoming pollutant in the world. 60,000 babies are born every year. In US alone, mercury related disease, particularly women's is the most affected. Pregnant women's are most affected by the mercury pollution. So then I developed with the help of the, this one, these electronic engineers or these chemical sensors, what we can do, can we convert a sensor? If I give you a gold surface to you, can you put the mercury drops and can see, can you sense it? Does it sense very accurately? Parts per billion level, parts per million. He worked with me. He's now working in UCLA right now, but he worked with me for about six months and we developed the mercury sensing technology. Using and then we start making the gold flakes, gold nanoparticles in different shapes by biological methods, by many methods, by prism shape, by spike shape, by electrical methods, you name it. We published nearly hundreds of papers in that area. Review article, hundreds of papers, anything. So you can check in Google, so you will find it. And then all those surfaces are working a very good sensor for mercury. So we develop a technology with the help of the engineers who stayed with. Electronic engineers come in there, okay, we can translate into that blah, 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 all these transducers and everything. And now it works as a technology. It is commercialized. It is licensed. It has been patented. I did not stop here because once I finish a project, we become number one in the world in mercury sensing technology. Any paper published in mercury sensing, any part of the world, it 99 chances are, 99% 90, chances are it comes to us for evolution. We have published papers, we published books, we took patents. Everybody, I give plenty of lectures in there too. So it is very well known. And I have a very special lab, million dollars lab, just for mercury sensing. Because mercury is a occupational health and hazard, it requires a special thing. So any, any industries who want to work, you realize that Australia want to become the number one in LNG production, liquid and natural gas. LNG is full of mercury. So CSRO, which is CSRO, who is responsible for these remediations, they approach to whom? You know that where they will go. They will come to me, Suresh, we need a solution. We don't want to establish a lab. You know already, we don't want to start from scratch. Here you are, do it. So we work in CSRO in the gas thing as well. Then I move in another field. I realized that one of the precious metals, platinum is used in the cancer treatment, the breast cancer, the brain cancer, the prostate cancer. Every cancer patient has to be chemotherapist, you know, radiations and everything. They use a cis platinum medicine and it has a lot of side effects. And I was a molecular scientist, some molecular engineering groups. The molecular engineering groups from my groups came out. We are making a number of molecular compounds is in there too. Is a review came in the literature. Let us try our compounds. How do they behave? And all of a sudden, we tested our compound in vitro in the pharmacologist's list. I hired a pharmacologist, two pharmacologists working in my groups, and they hired it. All of a sudden, down, these compounds which we prepared, they are new, novels. They are behaving 200 times better than market drugs. So all of a sudden, we become metal drugs people. You see, we were gold alloy metallurgist. Now we were sensor, chemical sensor. Now we are cancer treatment, pharmacologist. Now I have published nearly about 28 papers in the last five years. In Australia, our group is known as number one in metallo drugs. One of the paper which was published in the top journals, it has gone viral in the world. 242 media showing up that. 176 million people are viewing as a potential viewer of those things. All the academies like American academies, AAAS, uh, still in academies, they are showing that work. When the world was celebrating World Cancer Day, my work was depicted there. That is the inventions. You got it? So that is the way, the gold, the metal is the same. Remember, I started from the gold very early stages. The metal is the same. It's applications, right? It's translation of the knowledge of the gold. It's translation. 
and it is not over yet i can't complete in my lifetime the gold chemistry still going on right so that is the one one of examples i i told you that what is my group and that is only one group we have a sensor group we have a catalysis group we have a we use gold as a catalyst as well we have a uh, you know the you know the battery group so different different type of groups working together all the times if you look on the website if you look my report and everything you will find it that how the center is working is there too but again it has a has a plus and minus again research cost money nowadays you know when the money run out you know research go down at the moment we are striving for the for the for the grants and everything but we are doing in my opinion that the people are doing pretty well is there too the in, the important thing is there the students the students who work on this project phd students post doctorate fellow i that is problem and also is advantage they never leave my groups reason is twofold a they are getting a job sometimes they got only 50% jobs but what they are noting suresh the passion the passion we got here to do our research the purpose of doing research the purpose of the life what we are doing the togetherness what we feel here that is amazing we are happy here i'm i'm happy here so it become a problem because group grows and i can't control it some people sleeps there's about i have 60 pro phd producers so far and many of them has gone out many of them gone out most almost many of them go out and but many of them they are group leaders whenever i find a talent person to whom i can mentor as a leader then i i want to keep her at her because then she and he will be the leader for tomorrow because the legacy must continue like professor sirams like other people's legacy must continue otherwise what is the purpose you must translate you must transfer your knowledge to someone else uh, two things here one thing is there is um, you realize that whenever we trying to do a research we do the research for two purpose a curiosity we want to fulfill our curiosity why it is happening this happening that's all the research scientists are dreaming day day dreaming night dreaming they all time they're just working right and that because they want to generate knowledge right the translation of knowledge into the real practice is also an issue nowadays i believe strongly that n of knowledge has been generated around the globe n of knowledge has been generated you see the papers and everything is still not enough still there is a lot of curiosity in the mind but the problem is there at the moment in this environment we are more focused on the translation research right the new norms which is developing like the virtual virtual technology virtual thing artificial intelligence programs they need them they need very strong computing they need lot of things what you are explaining there too we have to do that as well and you can also communicate around the globes very rapidly through that as well so that is another examples in there too so those things will be very very good but whenever you want to see that your research whatever you doing in this way can be go to the market oh, that is the issues where they where you have to think about it how can i take my mind to the marketplace because market is very different than lab lab is different market is different market works on the profit and loss only market works on there how you can get more from less for more right so you can you can publish a good papers you can translate your knowledge but someone will come who can translate your knowledge into a product which is very very cheap has to be cost effective affordability is you know affordability is very very important if you, if your product is not affordable you know that in this world 80% of the discoveries are sub serving only 10% of the population of this world 80% of the discoveries are serving only 10% of the population of the world this trend must change inclusive innovation must come to the platforms inclusive innovation you people like you should think about it you people should think about it okay there is a purpose of research we are doing a research for a purpose okay one purpose is fulfill our curiosity second purpose is there how can i take my mind to the marketplace marketplace will tell you whether your product is sellable whether your product will be going to there or do you want to sell to the only riches or you want to sell for that product only there or you want to see no the purpose of my product is also how can i reach to the poorest how can my product can be affordable i will still make money but is ethical 
So it's my purpose. That's one thing. Your purpose of the research will change. The new norms will come in this world. From you peoples, when you ask a question, purpose of my research is not only curiosity, not generating a knowledge, but also translating the knowledge to the human beings, everybody, every one of us. Because many of your friends, they are not affluent either. Many of your friends may came to the poor backgrounds. Many of your friends may came out to a background where they want to translate something, they want to transfer to something to their parents, isn't there too. So that is very important. You keep in the minds there too. Yes, important thing is there. We have updated our attitude. If you are not updated, we will be outdated. Okay, I, uh, that's another very good question comes there too. I, I tell you one thing, uh, that is a question in my mind as well for several years. And in 2017, I did organize a, 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 a one day conference and which is known as Academic Sharp Brain. You can go to YouTube, you can find the videos in there, Academic Sharp Brain, right? And in that conference, I, I, the whole purpose was there, how to take your mind to the marketplace. And we invited all the talented, students, researchers who has done the PhD within their five years, within their five years. And I invited nearly about 10 top industrialists, include four billionaires. I invited a Nobel laureate. I invited about 10 top 10 scientists, including from all over the world, including US. Paul Weiss came here, the, the University of Cape Town professor, uh, you know, the hydrometallurgy editor in chief, he came here. All the president of the academy came here, premier of the Victoria came here. You know, the president of the, you know, the Space Organization of Australia, Dr. Megan Clark, she came here and it was also MC by the ABC Australian Broadcast. I was the organizer. This was the first event of its own kind in the world. Academic sharp brain. You must listen to that. And that is the purpose there too. What I was trying to do there too, the academics institutions and the business world are quite a two different institutions. They are getting closer and closer every day for two reasons, a things. A reason is there. I think I believe sometimes it's for a wrong reasons. Wrong reason is there that education is becoming a business. So business world is start seeing, oh, there is a profit there, go there. Or they start their own, own private universities, charging fees, provide that, provide that. So they are going, the business is moving towards education platforms with a, I, I believe that's my, my view for the wrong reasons. They should be integrated together for the good reasons. What the business should see, business, looking for the smart, intelligent people. They're looking for always successful, intelligent people. Education institution, they provide the successful, intelligent people. There is no platform in this world better than a academic platform because every year we see the people like you, bright, intelligent, smart, ready to move the world. Those kind of people, full of enthusiasm, full of energy, right? So the only thing, what is missing there? What is missing there is the leadership, the mentorships. You need the people see, who are the leaders who can direct you because you can go. Such enthusiastic people can go two directions, a wrong direction and a right directions. So here, the teacher play a very important role, right? Here, your mentor play a very important role, right? Mentor is not that one who teach you only class. Mentor is not that one who teach your class lectures. Who regret you? Mentor is the one to whom that 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 person become your benchmark, right? That become your benchmark to whom you trust. Trust is most important thing. Remember, mentor is a person to whom you trust most. And once you trust, then you follow him or her, right? Because trust is the one we create a relationship. Because there is no trust, there is no relationship. Is all superficial. So business world and the education world have to trust each other. They have to work together. Academic world say that, okay, guys, we are providing, we are providing you the best resource of your tomorrow productions. We are providing the human resources to you. You come over here, you can teach my class and we do that. I have done that as well. What happens in chemical engineering final year class? Every year fly from Melbourne to Perth to Elko refineries. I worked with Almina Industries for 28 years, right? So I, what I did is an American company is the largest producer of aluminum, aluminum in the world. And they have a six refineries. They have a biggest refinery in Australia, Western Australia. So all my class fly over there because when I worked with them 28 years, the CEOs asked me, Suresh, what do you want? You have served so many things to us. I say, I only want one thing. 
I want you, to, your top scientists, to be involved in the classroom. How do you want to do it? I say, I will fly the class and these lectures, they are not visiting industries. They are taking the lecture from your top scientist there. He was so thrilled, he signed MOU. And he said, Alcoa will cover all the cost of flying your class from Melbourne to Perth for seven years. For seven years, my class final year is flying from Melbourne to Perth, all final year chemical engineers. And they look for all their, they stay there for three days, four days. They take the four lectures there. They visit all the refinery in the 200 kilometers. Alcoa pick up us from the airport, from their thing. They stay there, everything there too. So all they teach, all these students, they have learned their theory in the classroom in the Melbourne. They see their practical operations, big refineries, how they're doing it. They're asking so many questions. And the first time they realize what they are studying in the class is there too. What the industry is looking into it. Industries spend nearly about 50, $60,000 every year. And the time of their scientists, what they're getting, they're looking for the brightest brain. Which one out of the class is the brightest brain? Which we, we, we can follow it. I call this program where class grows to the industries. I introduce another program where industry come to the class. Another lecture in chemical engineering, I took it, where no lecture is taken by the traditional professor. All the lectures, except one which I take myself, all the lectures are taken by the industrial top scientist. CEOs, top of the CEOs, they, have a, they only come because they have a network. They only come on my request. They are covered two over. They fly for a BHP Billiton from Adelaide. They're flying from somewhere. They're flying from somewhere. They take their class and they teach these students. Again, they keep an eye on the brilliant students, but my students keep a very good eyes on these industries. So one is there where the class goes to industry. One is there where class come to industries. This way, I'm trying to connect two world business and industries. When these two world come together on the same platforms, they will be very good for the new generations. What the world is looking for, what is looking for a diverse workforce, right? Diverse workforce. The most of the students, the you students, you students are the biggest enemy of yourself. When you give up something, when you say, no, I can't do it. That's it. That's a loss. It's a defeat. When you always have a one attitude, can do. I do provide very less research, but I provide a very top mentorships. None of my students can go, can say anything. I can't do it. She or he has to say, I can do it because Suresh is here. <laughs> I can do it. They always meet is in there too. I always like in COVID environment times because I am connected with all the India and all the Indian laboratories as well. I develop a, you know what about what they, because students are very mentally disturbed. They are very depressed. Seven months, they are not going to the lab. They are not doing anything. And three of, many of my students got the victim of the epidemic, COVID. One of the girls, Yoga Lakshmi, she's working in CLMI in Chennai. She became a victim of the COVID-19. She recovered, but she was always, she's a civil engineer. She was not my students at all. But all these students, because I'm in charge, I'm also having a associate provost chancellorships at my university. So I have a two roles to play. So in there too, that I was connected with them. We develop a new things known as covid -year club. We develop a new things. I am an innovator. So I develop a covid -year things. And covid -year things, what it does, it connect the students from the three continent. We meet every Saturday, every Monday and every Saturday, once in a week. And what these students do, they, they share the two good words of their language. She sent me the two sentences today is the Vekam and also Nandri in Tamil. So because I need two words and then there is a people from Pakistan as well. They do the Urdu word, the Punjabi words, there's a Hindi word, there's a Sanskrit word and there's a Belgium girls work in my group too. She sent the French words is in there, Sanskrit word as well is in there too. We share them and every student has to share about 10 minutes what is their experience, how they are doing it. So we are connected by the two hours meetings in the club. So in two hours meetings, our the mentorship, they are all happy, all their mental states gone and they are developing a mental attitudes to working together, you see? So those things, what you can do in IIT, Mad IIT Madras can make a big change we are passing through not the evolution, we are passing through a revolution, right? We need a, we, we, do, we don't need innovation, we need a disruptive innovation, you see? Those things, because the, remember that artificial intelligence time is there. Here, technology is competing with the thought of minds, racing with them, you see that? So that is why I'm telling every, every 11 seconds, one app is developed in the world. Every 11 seconds. Can you believe it? 
So we are competing. We are we are competing. This artificial intelligence is competing. All these digital technologies competing, and it is going to be more and more tomorrow. Right. So and that is why it is extremely important. Extremely important, and also the concept. That's what I'm telling you. The concept of the collective intelligence. The concept of collective intelligence, how the business world and academia can work on the single platforms. The business world don't have to do, these industries don't have to develop their R&D. Why they're investing millions of dollars of R&D? When the university can provide a bench in their industrial R&D, Alcoa R&D. Alcoa is paying millions of hundreds of millions of dollars of R&D. Why? Why don't you have RMIT, RMIT, one bench, one branch is there, Alcoa R&D. Where neuroscientists can work, they can also teach in the class. They can also involve the PhD programs, and all what you can do there, they can be employed to Alco as well. Industry cost is nearly half or one third only. University is doing producing a job to producing the real world graduates. They are producing real world graduates, and students are happy. They are their job is guaranteed, and they can choose what do they want to do. Time is coming when the most of these students in this new generation. They are not going for a job for money. Many students are coming out. They are going job for their passion. They want to do in the life. They realize in COVID-19 is passing a very clear message. There is only one life met. And your life is not tomorrow. It's today. Right? Tomorrow is unpredictable. So what they are saying, okay, so why hell? Why, why, why I have to make a million dollars? Why? For what? Because I have to leave it here. Something happened to me. So when I, I do something, what I want to do, what I want to contribute in this world. So many people, even in India, particularly young generation, are going for their passion. I want to be a singer, so, so it be. I want to be a dancer, so it be. I want to be a scientist, so it be. I want to do this, so it be. That time when IITs were going to US, or that time that IIT is going for only for money, is disappearing fast and will disappear fast. Will disappear fast because the thought process is very different now. Thought process is not that one, but used to be before. We are BMW, BMW make a difference, but no, BMW does not make a difference anymore. It make a difference because BMW can provide you a little bit of a happy, satisfaction, but happiness is inside you because destination is the same, whether you're driving a Suzuki or whether you're driving a BMW, we reach to the same destination, same time, same ways, isn't it? So that concept is slowly developing in the mind of the young generations. Still, it is a far away. It still is a status quo in India, but in particularly in this Western world, there is no status quo. The status quo is not existing here. And that trend, I hope, that trend will develop over there too. We have the mutual respect of the all the peoples, peoples who have, who have little or who have more, will disappearing very fast or probably minimize people. People values the people more than that what they have. tell you that as i told you before as well the prevention people are going for the prevention more than remediations people want to be healthy people you know that in old days when i was a young boy in india the first thing i heard from my parents okay go for the morning walk 5 30 we used to go for badminton 5 30 in the morning it would be dark go on the bike go on the badminton in there every day and i still remember that going walk in the morning was so good you feel so fresh throughout day is in there too now in covid 19 you're allowed to go in the five kilometer round only so everybody is going, GMA closed. See, we are going back to the nature. So the natural way of coming more and more, there is a company in Australia, Blackmoor, vitamins, vitamins, tablets, and capsules, which makes a lot of vitamins. It shares them to the $100 straight away because all the Chinese and everybody, they're not buying the things. They are buying these traditional capsules or the vitamins and all those things, their high quality is there. So what is showing us is a trend of the people, is the norms are changing. People are believing those things that natural things are still very, very good. Right? Attitude is changing. The norms are changing for sure. Is in there too. People are going for the natural ways. People are saying that why to take a medicine which has a side effect as well? Why not we do something which will stop these things to happen? If the air quality improves, if the water quality improves, if your lifestyle improves, is in there. Well, Nothing is wrong in there. Chances are your immune system will improve too. Then by attacking a viral will be very difficult. The viral itself will run away from you. 
that you say, well, guys, okay, she's strong. He's very strong. No, 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 no. I will go to somewhere else. Isn't there too? And that lifestyle, that patterns should go throughout the all ages, slowly and slowly. That should become a norms of our daily life for all age groups. And that I believe is going to happen because one thing is sure, nobody wants to die, right? Nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to be healthy. Nobody wants to be sick either, right? So everybody's thinking, okay, we know that these are the problems. Everybody agrees on one thing. It is the immune systems. You have to develop, you have to be stronger. And how you develop the immune systems, everything possible you have, either it is a capsule or is a vitamin D, a vitamin A or any vitamin B complex or anything. They are taking, they are going to take it, right? Or whether exercise, whether it's a yoga exercise, whether it's a plate, or whether it is a gym, whatever they can do, they will do it. Yeah, got it? India has a, a very good advantage in there. India, it is a, India is a center of meditation. This meditation things or this uh, yoga thing has not been explored fully. It is going, it is going. The word yoga day, you might have heard word yoga day. First time this thing happening, the world is start knowing it. But uh, you'll be surprised to see in Melbourne that every gym has a yoga class. Every gym has a meditation. When I heard from their mouth, the, the, the not a very correct in Sanskrit word, I laugh really, where they, where, where they try to pronounce any yoga, and which I know from India, it is not a right pronouncement, but they do it. And, and you will be surprised if, if I'm five minutes late in the class, no chance. The class is full, all is full. So it is getting popular. Okay. So that's one day. These are the new norms. People will go towards the prevention rather than remediation. That doesn't mean if you got sick, you have to take a medicine. You have to develop the new medicine as well. Like people are going for vaccine because COVID-19 is not disappearing. It still is there. It's still that tendency of developing a medicine, developing a vaccine, developing a things is definitely very much there. Why it is very much there? Because people are still not 100% committed to improve the environment. You know, our environment, our air quality, you know, in Delhi is still the environment, you know, the air quality goes back to the worst again because people are not changing the attitude of burning this crop, you know, the crop waste. I mean, that attitude has to change. There is no choice. The people must understand those things. Now, your responsibility, my responsibility, government responsibility is there to innovate the ways, to innovate the ways how we can do it. Think about, think about very innovatively. You are IIT graduates. Can I put a TV programs? Can I put in the sky? Sky app is there too, where everybody can see, wow, this thing is happening. Can I do something very innovatively? Can I make a games of it where people can see, oh, you know, when make a games, okay, it goes to the, okay, if you do that things, somebody's burning the things and the air quality and the people's soldiers are dying. Okay, it's a games. Every kid is watching it. They watch it. They love it. And they say, oh, 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 oh. And when they hear the news, they can see, ah, that is, I, I play that games. Okay, this has to be stopped. So what we do there too is attitude. You have to change the attitude. Is the attitude is the altitude of your success of making the change. I think my feeling is there. That's a good question again. The my feeling is there. They both are in competition, right? One is the inventor. The humans are inventing the artificial intelligence. Right? The trick will be there that if as long as we make sure that we are the master, we are the master, we are not the servants. As long as we depend, we do not depend them 100%. As long as we have a remote control in our hand, we will be okay. I always say, even in the life, never pass on your life remote control in somebody's hand. Yeah. Right? Same yes. goes to the artificial yes. intelligence. Never pass the remote control. As long as the human keeps the remote control in their hand, they will be all right. One thing is personal, but I can share it with you because I'm going to the states. I never wanted to become a scientist in my life. Right? I finished my post-graduation when I was 18 years old. Right? 
<laughs> so I was a, it's a different story. It's a story I'm telling you. And I always come first class first. So no problem at all. I was, I was good. I was good. I would say, I agreed. Everybody say I agreed. And the problem is there that wherever we go to interviews, I stayed with gold medalist. I got the university jobs. I enjoy that. And then normally on those days, what happens? Usually lectures, I start preparing for IAS, for IPS and all those top civil engineering exams and they pass through. My wish was there, I want to become an Indian Air Force pilot officer. And I got it, 58 GDOC. 48 GDOC from Dehradun, Indian Air Pilot, I won it. I was only two out of 420. But on the same years, my father died in accident. My mother never allowed to go to the Air Force. Same times, the, basically the, the University Grant Commission revised the grade as well. So lectureship is becoming quite attractive as well. That's not a bad idea. But then everybody is, a lot of my colleagues goes to PCS, IAS, many of those goes to there. So I was preparing for that too. So chances are that there is a, there is a phrase in the life where in my circle, my friend circle, where Suresh and there is one of my friends where there goes for interviews, they are selected. So usually if they are there, People usually get out. They don't go up here and there. And we become overconfident. I become overconfident. And a question is there, we need a failures. Failures are very important in life, right? Same thing happened when I got the IES exam there too. I got the cross first round, second round, interviews. I failed. First time in the life. I was 23 years old. I failed. I was living in a hostel in a single room away from my family. First time I smoke, only one cigarette, right? In those days, you probably still remember, there is a book used to be called Compet Competition Master. There's a book, magazines, you know, everybody studies all those competition masters and everything. And that was in my room as well. I was thinking first cigarette only, which is half through. I was, because I was depressed. I got the first time in the failures. I was basically feeling that life is not worth it is in there too. And why, why me, why it happens? Reason is simple, I was overconfident, very overconfident, right? And then what happens there when I was basically doing that, that pace of that competition master, I never forget in my life is there, that opens and the one phrase comes, is in there. Action may not bring happiness, but there is no happiness without action, right? And I throw away my cigarette, I stay to it. Start again. I started again, stayed away from the false failures and never forget that time. Then never, never days in my life in there too. So that was the things then I always tell the same story that action may not bring happiness. On the day of exams, you may get sick. You may get a car accident. But one thing for sure, if you don't prepare for exams, you know the answer, right? Anything can happen on the last minutes in the life. But that is beyond your control. That is beyond your control. That's your destiny. You can't change it. What you can change is there your choice. You have to be prepared. You have to prepare 100% for it. You have to do very best for it there. And action may not bring happiness as you, you fully prepare and something happened. COVID-19 came and you're fully prepared. What will do? Nothing. Gone. You'll prepare again. But there is no happiness in this world without action. So that was my story I share with you all is in there too. Probably it may inspire other people as well that and because it happens, I suppose it happens to everyone. It happens to every, every, everyone in there too. Second thing is there, I'm very lucky. I got a, I did my PhD in England and I got a very wonderful supervisors, you know, who always not only uh, teach me a very good science but always give me affections, which after the death of my father, I never miss my father. He was there is even English professor. And that left me an impression, which I'm passing to my students, the legacy must continue. You see, he was English, but he left me an impression. My whole life is there too. Usually when I went to the research, I was a Commonwealth scholar, scholar, so I was selected from India. I don't, after the failure of the IES, I never wanted to show my face to anyone in India. So I left country. And since the day, I never returned back to my country. Right? So that is the that is the issues, that is the things. That's why we do that too. So and and you know the life goes on, you know, is there too. There was a there was a times when I used to feel it that okay, this uh, Tata and Birlas and all those things, they are big giant at that times so when I used to go to schools, is in there too. And uh, one day I was I used to feel it when I was a school boy, is that okay, one day I will meet them. I will see them. It's a dream, you know, you know that never went to happen. See. For a decade, 
I was the board of directors of Aditya Birla Groups in the States. Just finish. I have a coffee with Kumar Mangrams. I've been there too. See, the dream come true. I still remember my those days, those days when I was school boys, I was passing through a street and looking for the builder cement, builder things, builder thing. And then I used to think, who are these people? Because there were at that time there was only two major industries started in the middle of Who are these people? Why they are so famous, the rich? So, and that is why. That's why I'm sharing with you those things as well. And sharing with you that uh, that that you know the and and third things I realize right now is there that material values, any things what you have, they have a utility values. They keep changing. Today you have a Toyota, tomorrow you have BMW, tomorrow day after you have Mercedes, but they have a utility values as well. They keep changing in the life. You have an iPhone, then iPhone one, two, three, or S8, S3. They have a utility values, they keep changing. What is not changing is the happiness inside you. That has spiritual values. And India teach that. India, in, that is only things which is present in India. It also give you a spiritual teaching as well. It also tell you the value of life not the living. Many things, many awards, many things you want, they have a utility values, they have achievements, they are not success. Success comes from your happiness inside you. And trust me, when you give a lot to others, you are happier. When you take something, no. Nah. Taking something is very easy. You know, you want something, everybody wants something. Everybody wants something. Even you go to temples, you want something from God, right? Otherwise you don't go, right? But you never go to the temples, okay, I have to pray to God today. I'm not going to ask anything. I have to give my homage to him and to whatever the gratitude is there. So in the life as well, one thing I can pass on to you that always three lesson to the students must remember. Triple R theory is there too. One is the uh, recognize. Recognize if somebody has helped you in the life, right? And then you can say, say thank you, a real thank you, recognize that it is the things. These are the value of gratitudes you remember as a students, that somebody has taught you, somebody has given me, somebody has telling me the pathways of doing the right things. Somebody has taught me, somebody has helped me. You will find your parents has done so much sacrifice for you, is a gratitude. That is known as the recognize. Second thing is a remember, a new generation in India and elsewhere, the memory is fading. Once your job is done for tomorrow as well, you don't know me, you will forget me as well. Right? So the idea was that remember, don't forget. Remember is some things, then you always remember, okay, yes, I met him. He taught me something, he told me something, right? And then, then you can say, say thank you, that you feel thank you, remember. And third thing is there, when you say you are becoming in a position, you are in a position where you can see, yes, I can transfer the same letter to someone, if he or she needs my help or somebody else needs my help, yes, I will do the same thing as well. I will help somebody as well, right? And third thing is their mean thank you, right? So it's triple R theory, which most of the students should remember as well, because you guys will become one day famous and rich and all those sort of things. They're all right, they're all, all should, nothing wrong with that, you should be there. All those things are all right. But remember those three things as well, because they are the one, you will find that a lot of rich people are not happy. They are drug addicts. You see in the Indian Bollywood programs nowadays, you see watching the, all those things, you see the American Hollywood programs, you're watching there, they have hundreds of millions of people, but they're druggists, they're not peace, right? So the money cannot buy the happiness. Money is there, one should have it, no problem. But it utility values only. You know, big house, big cars, big everything as well. So these are the things I want to share with all the students as well. Perhaps, I hope, it will happen.